Hey, dear creatives. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Creative Psychotherapist Podcast. It is episode 83. And today I'm sharing a conversation that I had with Dr. Adina Silvestri. And Adina and I met in um, Melvin Varghese's mastermind group a couple of years ago. And uh, she ha- she's the host of a podcast called Atheists in Recovery. And um, she and myself and a handful of other therapists uh, from around the country had planned an in-person get together um, this summer and um, in early August. And um, so there were seven of us. And unfortunately, four people end up having to cancel at the last minute because they got COVID. And so, um, at this amazing, beautiful house that we had rented overlooking the mountains in, um, New Mexico, um, Adina and myself and, um, Dr. Sonia Lott, um, uh, got to hang out and spend, you know, almost a week together and working on our businesses and supporting one another. And um, so we recorded this podcast together live. It's actually the, one of the first um, like guest podcasts where I've recorded in the same room with the person that I was speaking to. It was a little bit weird because I'm so used to doing it online. Um, But I really love what she's doing. Um, Part of, I got to actually sample um, and participate in some of her expressive writing applications. We're going to be talking about that in the podcast today. Um, She has a group called, which she's titled Writing Bravely. And, um, and so we got to use some of those on our little um, business retreat development thing. I don't know what what we're calling it really. We were calling it workation, but I don't know. I, I feel like it was more than than that. Um, anyway, I hope that you enjoy this conversation and um, check out what she's doing with her writing bravely group. It's um a non-clinical group that gets together online and she facilitates using different prompts. And um, I'm sure it's going to be transformational because in the one prompt that um, I uh, wrote, um, it was really eye-opening and transformative for me and has really prompted me to make a lot of changes. So um I hope you enjoy this conversation. The Creative Psychotherapist is the official podcast of the Creative Clinician's Corner, a practice building resource for creative psychotherapists. TCP Podcast is the cast for creative, expressive, and experiential focused psychotherapists curious to learn how to design, build, and scale a thriving private practice. Your host, Raina Lombardi, interviews successful therapists about the tools and strategies they have used to develop creative focused practices. They also talk about the products, services, and side hustles they have developed using their knowledge and creativity to enhance their therapy practices, make a greater impact in their communities, and diversify their income streams. Welcome. Now here's your host, Raina Lombardi. Thanks so much for listening to the Creative Psychotherapist podcast. I'm your host, Rena Lombardi, and I'm very excited to welcome my next guest. Her name is Adina Silvestri, and she has an educator's doctorate, an EDD. Correct. Yeah. An LPC, uh, which is a licensed professional counselor, a certified clinical hypnotherapist, a certified brain spotter. And she is located in Richmond, Virginia, and she works with children and families. She specializes in treating women with substance abuse issues and in helping children who've experienced trauma lead full and productive lives. Dr. Silvestri helps women with binge eating issues recover from shame and find hope in healing. 
Dr. Silvestri's clinical work includes providing supervision to counselors in training, and she is an innovative counselor educator, teaching aspiring counselors the skills needed to become empathetic and creative. In addition to her clinical work, uh, Dr. Silvestri started an online expressive writing group called Writing Bravely, which works to improve people's physical and psychological health by writing their way through to their future self. She writes for publications such as The Dr. Oz Show, American Counseling Association, Richmond Family Magazine, and Recovery and Wellness Publications. In her spare time, she mentors students through Blue Sky Fund, and her hobbies include sailing, running, and learning Japanese. Welcome. Thank you so Konnichiwa. much for being here. Hi. <laughs> I didn't realize that you were learning to speak Japanese. Yeah, it's a couple of years now. I have heard that that's one of the most challenging languages to learn as an English speaker. I would agree with that statement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, what made you decide to take that up? Yeah, so some friends of mine and I were planning a pilgrimage prior to COVID. Uh, to the Kumono Kudo Trail in Japan. And we decided to learn some of the language uh, uh, prior to the trip. And then the trip just kept getting postponed. And, uh, and so we figured by the time we go, we will be virtually fluent. <laughs> so, That's amazing. Yeah. Very exciting. Awesome. Well, Let's start by talking about how you got involved in expressive writing. Yeah, well, it started during COVID. Uh, I was feeling sort of unmoored and isolated and I wanted to find some community. I was looking online and I saw this writing group and it was Bailey Haggard's Life in 10. And I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the process. I fell in love with the community. And I found that as I was working on my own healing journey, that writing was the one thing that really kind of helped the most in that, mm -hmm. during that time period. And, you know, I wasn't really ready for therapy, but come to find out writing for me was its own source of, of therapy. It, it, it enabled me to become vulnerable in ways that I never could have imagined. You know, I thought that I was really slick and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go in there and, you know, do a little writing, you know, meet some people. No, it, it became something just far greater. Um, and so, it really started my healing process and um, yeah. So that's really interesting. Like you had been practicing for a really long time and obviously you're skilled in a variety of modalities and lo and behold, lo and behold, expressive writing comes in and sweeps you off your feet. Yeah, and I was, you know, one of those kids uh, yeah, I was, I was always very, uh, I loved to read. Um, my parents always had just books lining shelves. And, I mean, books on the kitchen table, books on the shelves, books everywhere. And so, um, and one of my favorite outings with my mom when I was younger was going to Barnes and Noble. That was like a big deal. That was like our mother daughter bonding time. And so I always had a, a love um, for language and for stories. And I always had journals. And so there was, you know, there's something to that, but I never thought that I'd be sharing my journals with a bunch of strangers online. <laughs> that was, <laughs> was a little different, but yeah, it is a different process when you're sharing from that like self expressive process versus mm -hmm. the intentional process of writing for uh, consumption by others. Um, yeah. Can you speak a little bit about um, the process that that you were kind of learned in this group 
for expressive writing? Was there kind of a, a template that you followed? Was it more free association, um, different kind of prompts? Yeah, there were definitely different types of prompts and they varied depending on the instructor's mood and what was going on at the time. And then you could also, you know, there were a few people in, in our group that were writing their own memoirs. And so they were ignoring the prompts altogether. And, you know, you would hear these traumatic experiences from these strangers. And, you know, you thought, wow, that is so brave, you know? And so then that kind of enabled me to dip my toes in a little bit deeper. And I'm like, okay, vulnerability begets vulnerability. Let's see how this goes. And, <laughs> you know, it was, yeah, it was just, it was quite the experience. It wasn't anything that I had imagined it would be, you know, and then you'd have like the, the poetry writers that were all flowery and that was beautiful as well. And, um, you know, I, I could only just observe that from afar. Like, oh, that's great that you, you can do that, but that's not me, <laughs> but yeah. So it sounds like in this particular group, it was really you know, we'll give you some direction, but you're open to interpret it in, in how you need to use the time. Yeah, they would go in 10 minute blocks. And so they'd give you a prompt um, and the introduction prompt, which I use with my own groups now, my own online groups and my therapy sessions uh, is right now I am. And that was always the first prompt. And so you could always rely on that. And that was like your, your introduction prompt. Mm your arrival prompt is how they would say it. Um, and then after that, it was fair game, <laughs> fair game. I remember one time the prompt was, uh, what do you consider holy? <laughs> Just <laughs> That sounds interesting. That was a lot of different <laughs> responses, a lot of different pieces for that one. Yeah. I like the right now I am prompt. It makes me think of a particular tool that um, I was trained in, which is to give voice to your image using the I am. So um, if you create a piece of art and then finding an Im a, either the image itself, the whole image or a space in that image, maybe it's a color, maybe it's a specific thing with the image and then giving voice and writing about that from the I am mm -hmm. um, about that part of the art, um, which always opens up a lot of insight and um, it, it can just take you into all kinds of really cool places. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that the right now I am. Yeah, I love it. Is there a favorite prompt that you have that you feel like really opened the door for you and kind of opened you up to the process that you go back to? Mm. I think I always have to start with the right now I am because, you know, when, when the thoughts are swirling and you're kind of tripping over them at some point. Um, you know, that one always grounds me and then I can kind of launch from there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like the process was, um, it just connected mm -hmm. and was so impactful for you that you decided to create a space to do this work with your clients. Mm. Can you share a little bit about, um, you know, what are some of the benefits that you're seeing using the expressive writing process in your work with clients? Yeah, so I've really only introduced it with my groups, specifically my men's group uh, in the last two years. And, it, you know, it's been interesting. We only do it at the beginning of group. It's like maybe, maybe the first 10 minutes, but it's a nice, like I said, it's a nice grounding piece. And, you know, there are guys um, in this group that 
that aren't, you know, their emotional language, you know, maybe needs a little work. And so writing was not comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, just kind of having to say, oh, just, just try it, just see what happens. <laughs> and, and then after a couple months, some of the guys would come back and just say, oh, I can't believe you have me writing. You know, these could be, these could be ex-military guys, you know, people that, that really for a living weren't, couldn't, right, be in touch with their feelings. And so, um, you know, I can't believe this, Adina. I can't believe you have me writing all this stuff, all this time, you know, every single time we meet. And, um, but they're able to organize their thoughts and they were able to look for patterns and they were mm. able to sort of, you know, bring words, bring language to their, some of their emotional experiences that otherwise wouldn't have shown up for them. Mm -hmm. And definitely wouldn't have shown up in a public space. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the power of utilizing creative expression, um, that it, it helps people to open up into places that they've been protecting for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, really powerful stuff happens when we do that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So share a little bit about the group that you created, the Writing Bravely group. And is that, it sounds like that is separate from your clinical work and that that is open to anybody who wants to experience the process? Yes, it is. It is separate from the clinical group and it's, it's, it's anyone that wants to, to try out expressive writing. Maybe they're a writer, maybe they've never written anything in their life and everything in between. And, you know, we just sort of meet them where they are. You know, I, I wasn't a writer. I wasn't at least not publicly. <laughs> and, and so you can dip your toes in like I did. You can jump right off into the deep end um, or just sort of start wherever you feel comfortable. I think the important part is really even maybe even the hardest part really is just showing up. And we would write via prompts you could follow the prompts or you could ditch the prompts and and we would write for 10 minutes on each prompt and that would be sort of the the structure of the group and then would you read what you wrote yeah read what you wrote and you would then you would share that's the that's the powerful piece you know that's where all those great brain chemicals start to just to to come into play you know you've got the oxytocin you know the when you're sharing and then you have the serotonin um the happy the happy um um i want to say molecule but that's not the right word um hormone, hormone. <laughs> yeah and so there's just that lovely mixture and so it, it is really important to, to be able to share. I, I agree. I, that ending piece of sharing and um, connecting in that way is so powerful um, because in other people's sharing, we start to develop some resonance mm -hmm. and that um, ability to understand, oh, wow, like we're having very similar experiences and I'm not so alone in whatever this piece is. Yeah, I'm not so alone. And even if it's not the same experience, you can find similar threads. Mm -hmm. You know, it's everyone's going to be, everyone goes through suffering in some way. And everyone has the ability to build up resilience. You know, it's a learned trait. And so you'll see that through, throughout people's stories. And so how do you structure the group? Is it like, uh, like an open-ended group? Do people sign up for a period of time? Um, how are you yeah. structuring it? 
so it'll be uh, the first group will be a six week group. And it'll be an hour and a half long and it'll be online, as we mentioned. And then we'll take a few weeks off and get ready for the next group. So it'll be an ongoing open group. Six week rotation. A six week, yeah, with, nice. with, a, with a break in between groups. Not like, it doesn't feel like a huge commitment, like no. signing up for six weeks at a time. Yeah. yeah. What made you decide to title the group Writing Bravely? Mm. Well, to me, it just felt like there was so much courage and vulnerability and in sharing your story. And, you know, we, we want to tell stories that are brave and, and true and messy and unfiltered and yeah. And so it just, it just kind of felt like a good fit. Mm -hmm. And so what is, what does it mean to you to be brave? Mm -hmm. I would say being vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, sharing those messy truths, I think is, is being brave. Yeah. Yeah. Stepping into the unknown. Yeah. Is definitely a brave thing mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Especially if you're not, if you didn't grow up with that you know with, with those role models you know with yeah especially older generations I feel like you know they there wasn't mm -hmm. a lot of you know you keep the secrets inside the family kind of a deal so yeah yeah that's so true and you know makes me think of like you're you work a lot with men mm -hmm. and how just societal conditioning um the message to men is often it's not okay for you to share your sensitivity or you know your emotions um so to lead people into writing and help them come to feel comfortable with that is um really awesome yeah, there is quite a masculinity dilemma in our society. It's uh, we don't want them to be masculine, but yet yeah, we're uh, we're uncomfortable if they're anything less than that. <laughs> and it's like, um, but we expect that they share their feelings, and then we're it's a little bit turned off when they do. It's 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 quite the paradox. So we end up getting a lot of mixed messages. And so um, the emotions that are often acceptable from men are anger, you know, and, um, and so really trying to dig a little bit deeper and what's underneath that I think is, is really important. And so you know, writing helps with that. Writing helps unlock a lot of those, those secrets. Um, mm -hmm because they have to be able to be emotionally aware about their own selves first before they can help anyone in their families. Mm, yeah, so true. Um, we're not regulating ourselves. We're not gonna be able to manage if somebody around us is dysregulated. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So what helps you maintain a regular writing practice? Mm. Oh, that's a great question. I think that my practice right now is, is irregular, <laughs> but, but every morning um, I will write and it's usually, even if it's just for five minutes and um, really it's a lot of about set 
um, I really have to set the environment, you know, I have to have my favorite writing candle, and my favorite pen and um, my notebook. Um, I was going to name the notebook. It's a very popular notebook and now I can't think of the name. You probably know it. Um, is it like a type of journal? It, it is, oh, I'll have to get back to you on is it that. Is like the one with the dots in it? No, it's, um, no, no, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you, <laughs> but, a um, moleskin. Well, I have those two, but this is actually, um, it's part of a, like a, like a writing program, although I don't do the program, but oh. I use the book. I just use the book and I've ditched the program and it's a great book. Um, right. I think of it. So, and so that's kind of my, that's kind of how I start. And it's gotta be the same place, you know, my little writing corner. Um, and it's kind of like, when I'm in the zone, it's a sacred hour. When I'm not in the zone, it's a sacred five to 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but you sit down and, and see what happens. Yes. Yeah. Always. I always, that's, that's always how I need to start my day. Yeah. It's sort of like emotional windshield wipers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find that I, not that I do a tremendous amount of writing, but I will often do a, like a combination of art journaling and writing in the morning. And that always, um, that always makes the day a little bit better. Like the start to the day a little bit better mm -hmm. when I can like be consistent with it. Um, but I too am a regular, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll have like a good streak and then something will happen and my routine will change. Like I've been traveling and of course that impacts everything and then getting back into the routine. So it's been a few weeks since I've done any, done any journaling really. Um, yeah, it helps when I post it online and I think, um, mm. that's when I've gotten the most consistent is, um, like I went 30 days, 30 days of posting on Twitter, um, last year. And I'm looking to start that again before the end of the year. Um, because, you know, in Twitter, there's a huge writing community. And so everyone just kind of links up and supports oh. you. And, um, and so that's been really fun. And so when you write on Twitter and share your writing on Twitter, what are you writing about specific topics? Yeah. I'm writing about whatever strikes my fancy, mostly things that I, that I know a good deal about, you know, like covert depression and uh, eating disorders and substance abuse and, um, and how to build a resilience toolkit, you know, things like that. Uh, and then sometimes I'll just go off the cuff and, and write about, you know, <laughs> one of the things that I wrote about recently was um, 20, 20 tools to survive um, an apocalypse. <laughs> that sounds interesting. So what are some of those tools? <laughs> I believe I just talked in, in the, the main gist of it was just talking about looking for like everyday delights, you know, like a sunrise or, you know, a thousand tiny bubbles, you know, that you can see from the playground, your nearest playground, or, you know, just, just a bunch of delights, I think was the main gist of that one, but. Mm, yeah, finding, finding the things that feel good even when what's swirling on around us outside feels scary and chaotic. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to focus on the negative. Um, anger management is another topic um, that I've written extensively about and I've published about. Um, and, you know, I th one, of the, one of the things that I had read was that we have about like, 
it was a high number. I'm, I'm probably misquoting this now. So it's been a while, but like 70 to 80% of our thoughts on a daily basis are negative. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh. Yeah. Especially if you're like a, like a compassionate type, maybe that feels really deeply. I could see where that would track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I know I catch myself and I'm like, oh, where, where are you going with this story? <laughs> <laughs> This is, I don't think the story is, 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 is true. Let's check in with this now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's hard sometimes, but if you like develop that practice of noticing and catching yourself and then switching the story, um, yeah. it, it helps to get out of that pattern, but it's so easy to get there too. Um, when, most of the content that is kind of filtered through to us in like general news media and such is really um, emotionally volatile and it is triggering in, in many ways. So uh, contributes to people's perception of, um, you know, doom and gloom. Mm. When yeah. you do your prompts, do you um, think about that when you're designing your prompts to get people to write about things that are more delightful and uplifting? I don't think, no, I don't think I have a, a, a certain, I, I don't want to have a certain emotional, I don't want to set an emotional tone because you know, mm -hmm. I want people to just to be free to write whatever they're called to write mm -hmm. you know in that moment in that space yeah yeah and when and when instructors have tried to set those tones in the classes I think I um unconsciously pre-consciously buck that <laughs> and I go in the opposite direction <laughs> you're like nope <laughs> so I would say that people that want to join my group need to be rule breakers so <laughs> maybe that should be in the in the sales page I don't know you must be a rule breaker in order to write bravely exactly you must be a rule breaker you can't fit into any box yeah yeah and um if people wanted to learn more about your group where can they find that information? Yeah, they can go to writingbravely.com and they can learn more about the group there. And I published about seven podcasts that kind of take you on the journey of how I developed the group, how I think about the group, what I hope people will get out of the group. Um, so that would be a good place. I can definitely to start put the link to that series or, or the links to that series in the show notes for okay. listeners. So if you wanted to listen to Adina's podcast where she talks about writing bravely and how she structures things, uh, that'll be in the show notes for you. Um, anything else that, you know, if people were interested in participating in a six, the six week group with you, like what you'd want them to know. Yeah, maybe I would, I would say that writing can really be transformational. You know, I think there's, there have been, you know, at least a thousand studies on expressive writing. Um, if you're interested in, in learning more, James Pennebaker has really sort of laid the groundwork for expressive writing and how it can really help you physically and psychologically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, I think it's more about just writing your thoughts and feelings. You know, when you write something down, a cascade of events occurs, you know, you write it down, you're able to say, okay, yeah, this event, this pivotal event happened to me. And then you're able to organize it. And you're also able to then make connections between there's a lot of wind <laughs> all of a sudden there's a, a lot of wind oops something just blew over <laughs> <laughs> 
you're able to then make connections between what happened to you and you know, did these experiences happen in your past? Um, and how are you relating to the people around you, your family? How is it affecting your family, your friends, your work? You know, so there are just a cascade of events that I, that I think uh, I want to highlight um, that happen once you put pen to paper. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel like right, right between writing and visual art making, um, sometimes I'll do them in conjunction. The writing is with the visual art making yeah. to really kind of capture that moment in time of what's going on in that moment in time um, or what I want to create in the future, which um, I know you kind of spoke to um in how you describe it writing your way through to your future self mm -hmm. yeah so well thank you so much for sharing today and talking about your work and um yeah it's been a pleasure yeah thank you take care Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Creative Psychotherapist Podcast. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation about writing bravely and being vulnerable and learning about yourself and growing through writing uh, with Adina. And if you're interested in participating in her workshop or her, her course, uh, the Writing Bravely course or group, I should say, like I said, it's a non-clinical group. Um, you can check, check it out at her website and just go to writingbravely.com and it will route you to um, the page where she goes through and kind of explains how, um, you know, writing can be a healthy method for coping with life and understanding oneself. Um, all right, everybody stay creative and take good care. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Creative Psychotherapist. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. For show notes, downloads, and additional resources, head over to the website at www.creativeclinicianscorner.com.